Well, a good Saturday morning. Thanks for joining us here on Power Talk Radio. It's time for the Experts Program, and Louis Alvarez is standing by to join us here to talk about technology. Good morning to you, Louis. Good morning, Mark. How are you? Doing pretty good. It's the weekend, so it's got to be good, right? Exactly. Exactly. And it's, you know, the day before Mother's Day, we should right. be uh, celebrating that. And then, uh, you know, it looks to be like good weather for at least a few days. So let's right. enjoy it while we can. Now, are you guys going to be able to get out on the sailboat this weekend at all? Not this weekend. We're going to go out to Today, we're going to go out to the Santa Lucia Highlands uh, wine event out there in uh, at Marisole Winery. It's uh, something that they do every year to celebrate that particular AVA that we have. And then uh, tomorrow, we got to take care of some stuff and uh, do a little work around the house before uh, before the week starts. Very good. Well, let's dive into our topic for the day here. It's uh, from Mozilla, and it's about shady mental health apps that are kind of inching towards privacy and security improvements, but uh, they still siphon away a lot of our personal data. First off, what's going on with these mental health apps and why are they a thing? Well, you know, May is Mental Health Awareness Month. And it used to be that people didn't want to talk about mental health. It was you know, something that was discussed and quiet or, you know, people's kind of suffered in, in privacy. But since the pandemic, there's this, you know, real understanding that people do suffer from a lot of stress, a lot of depression. And especially during, you know, the height of the COVID pandemic, a lot of apps were developed to help people cope because they weren't able to go to the doctor or see psychologists, you know, we were all kind of separated and, and not being able to get together like you would normally do. So a lot of apps came into fashion and, and the FDA approved a lot of them for reimbursement, right? So mental health, telehealth, that sort of thing became a thing. And so all of these apps popped up to help people cope with mental health issues. But the problem is that a lot of them are not, they're not really designed for helping you with your mental health. They're really designed to get your information and send you ads and get you to buy stuff. So Mozilla, they're famously known for their uh, browser. They have a uh, an annual survey that they do about mental health apps called Privacy Not Included. So you can just Google Privacy Not Included and you'll find the page where they take all the mental health apps that are out there and they evaluate them in terms of their value as well as how well they protect your privacy and the data that you input. Because you got to imagine a lot of the these apps ask you very personal questions and you reveal a lot about yourself and your mood and, and how you're feeling. And you want that information to be protected and not be available to just anyone. Right. And I notice here that they were under their key findings in the story. They talked about the fact that some of the popular apps like Youper, that's Y-O-U-P-E-R and Wobot, W-O-E-B-O-T, made some positive changes towards improving security and privacy for the users. But then on the other end of the scale, apps like Replica's My AI Friend was one of the worst apps that Mozilla reviewed because because it's plagued by weak password requirements, sharing of personal data with advertisers, and recording of personal photos, videos, voice, and text messages that the consumers had cha- shared with the chatbot. So it sounds like that's just a, a data harvesting scheme uh, masked is. as a, a mental health app. Yeah. And, you know, a lot of these apps are, are really good. And in fact, many health insurance plans include a free subscription to apps like Calm is one that's really popular. And there's some other ones that are out there. And these have been vetted that they are better than most in terms of protecting your information and, and your privacy. But if you find yourself out there looking for some help and you find run across one of these apps, make sure you do your research. Make sure you, you check privacy not included and see if it falls in one of their, uh, their bad categories. Uh-huh. Um, and look at the reviews to make sure that the people that are using them have some positive things to say about it because using an app is not a bad thing. You just got to use the right app. Right. And I'm struck by the irony of the fact that somebody with mental health issues could download one of these apps supposedly to help with their mental health. And then what they could find that would be distressing and depressing would be the fact that they downloaded the wrong app that is compromising their security and their privacy. Exactly. Brings right. about a whole bunch of other problems. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> it just makes the problem even worse. So privacy not included warning label. So what's the website folks go to again to get this information from Mozilla? So if you go to foundation.mozilla.org, so M O Z I L L A dot org, you'll find their privacy not included uh, link right on that homepage. Okay, that's what you want to look for. And I imagine if you put uh, if you uh, search uh, privacy not 
included by Mozilla, it'll take you to a link to that. Absolutely. And they'll also be posted on our website next week. Okay, sounds great. All right, that's Luis Alvarez, CEO of the Alvarez Technology Group. Online, it's alvareztg.com. At alvareztg, that is their Twitter handle. And Luis, the toll-free number for the iTeam. Give us a call at 866-78-ITEAM. That's 866-784-8326. All right, thanks very much, Luis, and enjoy the rest of the weekend. You too, my friend. 